episode number one of Married to Remodeling. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Rachel. And I am the co-host, James. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be sharing eight things that your contractor wishes you knew about the business or remodeling. So who better than to ask than James? That's right. I am the resident remodeler here, uh, general <laughs> contractor. Had the business going since 2018. However, that was just part-time when I started that. Um, I was working full-time pretty much doing tile work, so I was in the trades and construction uh, before that for several years. Uh, then I moved into full-time. Once business started picking up with remodeling, moved over into just doing that full-time, the general contracting work. So got some experience under my belt. I've also been doing other things for years throughout my life. But as a business, small business, we are very thankful to have had over 50 clients that we have worked with. Mm -hmm. And there's a few things sometimes you wish your clients knew ahead of time. So we're yeah. going to discuss some of those. Yep. So uh, I'm going to read the eight that we came up with, and then James will elaborate on them a little bit more. Sound good? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing was that things don't happen as fast as they do on TV. So what do you mean by that, James? It won't take three days to do my kitchen like on HGTV? And they do it so fast. It could. Um, <laughs> if you don't want it to last, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's many things that factor into that. And I think we'll be discussing a few of those things in some of these later points um, HGTV, when they have certain things done, um, obviously it's for TV. So stuff, yes, is already planned ahead or whatever it might be. They already have stuff picked out, which they don't put these things really into perspective. You know, sometimes they're meeting with new clients, clients as it seems, but obviously, they've already had stuff picked out or whatever, because there's no way no. within such a short time that people are going to pick out the style they want or whatever. I mean, I've dealt with customers for weeks, months, discussing mm -hmm. certain things and little bit in whatever it might be, their kitchen or bathroom, and things still change even while doing the work. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, it's just unrealistic or what even, HGTV does. Or even just getting materials. You know, if somebody on HGTV has a brand new kitchen or whatever, and miraculously they are wearing the same clothes the day that they look at the countertops that they just picked out as they are when they're being installed. It's like, how did that work? <laughs> um, It depends. I mean, some of the shows... Um, I mean, nowadays it might be a little harder with supply things, um, which I think we're also discussing a little bit. Um, but some of them you see, it's like in-stock cabinets slash IKEA cabinets, and the guys are assembling it and everything else, um, which, okay, it's not a custom cabinet. It's not mm -hmm. perfectly made for that kitchen area, that layout sometimes, um, which causes some errors and everything else, um, which... On camera, can look good, and they can hide stuff, but if you probably see it in person, it does not look that well. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we were watching Good Bones a couple weeks ago, and they had one episode where it was a brand new kitchen, well, mm -hmm. brand new whole house, and the dishwasher was it? Like, if you yeah. looked, you would not have been able to open it, because it was, yeah, the like, stove hitting stuck the out. stove. Yep. And which, so I, which is funny, because I had a client, we had something very similar the same like thing kind of come up but we knew about it and spaced stuff out but it was still very close yeah and I think I had seen on Instagram they did post that somebody else noticed it and like tagged them in it and they were like yeah we had to rush through things and then they ended up fixing it later on so I mean I guess even on HGTV things are not not as they seem and it does take longer they might have to go back and fix yep. stuff Again, it's in editing yeah. and everything else, so they can right. hide things that they don't want you to see, or mm -hmm. yes, oh, it may not be 100% finished, but it's good enough to look on camera, and they complete it actually afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So, number two was that some things are more expensive than you think. 
Yeah. Some people think that, you know, oh, I can remodel my bathroom for two, maybe $3,000, or I could do my kitchen for 5000 or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, again, maybe. Yeah, it's uh, not like it could but it's be not done, gonna, but... But it's not really going to last, and what kind of materials are you using? And they're probably going to have to do it themselves. (laughs) And they'll have to do it themselves, for sure. Yeah, Uh, labor and everything. Again, trades are not something that tons of people are going into, so trade costs are going up because... Trades are a dying trade. (laughs) Yeah, so not as many people in it, so it's harder to find people and people that want to work in it. So that, you know, cost of labor is going up. Um, But yeah, I mean, like I said, kitchen stuff alone... Um, even bathroom, it can depend on materials that you pick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for let's say countertops in your kitchen, you could pick something and you could spend three thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You could spend ten thousand dollars just on your countertops. Yeah. You know, so it really comes down to things that you pick, um, and if you're willing to do it yourself. Um, you know, and the size of things. If it's a really small bathroom, mm-hmm. you know, again, if you did it yourself, $2,000 possibly. But just alone, let's say if you're hiring a plumber to come in and, I don't know, set a new tub, hook up a new mixer, put in your toilet, all the finished plumbing, you know, kind of the rough plumbing... Mm-hmm. I mean, his cost alone is probably going to be between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like we're our business is kind of one where if if you do meet with a client and they say I can do the demo work to save a little bit of money or I can do whatever to save a little bit, you've been pretty reasonable with allowing the customer to do things like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I have. I know um, some remodelers aren't, and yes. they want full control over the whole entire thing. Don't want the client to do anything, which I mean, I understand that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm usually fine with clients doing some things that hopefully they can't really mess up. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can mess up stuff on demo. Um, you know, if you remove sure. a wrong wall or something, yeah. um, be bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hey, it's their house. Um, <laughs> I removed this wall and my roof caved in. Uh, yeah, no, I would, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, go through things ahead of time, make sure they're doing what's right and stuff, you know. I mean, like some demo stuff, yeah, I will let customers do to save some money. Um, painting, if they want to do that, yeah. that's fine too. That I mean, that's, I mean, really good paint jobs, yes, it's an art and like mm-hmm. everything else, but for the most part, your average homeowner can get a, paint job done you know so that will save them some money so they do appreciate that like i said i've had several clients thank me for letting letting them to do some things that they could and stuff because they had talked to others and they wouldn't have been able Mm -hmm. to do anything and it'll save them money and stuff so always always looking to help out yeah all right number three was inspections slash inspectors work weird times and a lot of times we have to wait on them to move forward. <laughs> Our favorite friend, the inspector. Ooh, yeah, don't get me started on those guys. Um, no, they're great. Uh, inspectors are great, um, but they also are not. Yeah. Um, yeah, talking about weird times and everything else, um, it's another thing where there's a bit of a shortage. So some of these inspectors work just for... Um, not just for one county or city, they'll, they will work with several. So they may only be in two days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I have found several of them having off on Fridays. So that's already another day that you can't get stuff done. Um, I've had an inspector tell me that, well, they don't necessarily get a lot of permit requests and everything else, and because they're shared between like two different counties or whatever um they basically check their emails once a month oh my um, goodness. so yeah so if you turn in for a permit and everything else so that can delay things um kind of going back with the first point there about you know why why does it take so long for something to get done well that right there if you're <laughs> 
you know, some of these jobs, you need permits or, or they want permits pulled. It's like, well, if you got to wait that long for the inspector to approve your permit, you can't work. Yeah, and we we did have the one client earlier this year who sent an email and felt that we weren't giving them like high priority because nothing was moving and it was like we're waiting on the inspector. That's yeah. the next thing. And so they understood after, but yeah, it stinks that we have to wait for them too and it might feel like we're, you know, not getting back to someone's house or someone's project. It's like we physically can't do anything until it's approved by an inspector. Right? Yes. I mean, you, <laughs> you can face fines and everything if um, if you do work ahead of time. I mean, people will do work ahead of time, but like the client you were talking about, um, yeah, even just for my uh, part of the building permit, I think I waited about three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, my electrician and plumber... They were about a month out, and I had called and emailed the inspector several times before they had gotten back to me so we could get anything done. Um, the only reason that <laughs> the only reason that job moved forward and everything else is because he was then on vacation, and his fill-in inspector was okay with some things, and we were able to kind of move forward. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean... That right there, just on my time waiting and those other two permits, that's basically already two months yeah. of just waiting. Yeah. And with COVID, it hasn't been. Has that made it more of a challenge? Um, I With inspections, I haven't necessarily seen any. I mean, a little bit probably because staffed hours or something or less yeah, down at the offices or something. But, Not I mean... Much. So they're just slow all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's been tons of cases of inspectors not getting back. There are some legal things of what contractors and stuff we can do or whatever with timing things and stuff. But it's another thing, too. You want to make the inspector happy because yeah. you will be dealing with them again. Mm-hmm. So let's take a little break, and when we get back, we'll finish up with the last five things your contractor wishes you knew. If you're looking for new healthy recipes and are sick of Pinterest, you need clean, simple eats in your life. They have four seasonal cookbooks and two dessert or treat cookbooks. My favorite are the honey cinnamon rolls, and James, I think, enjoys about anything they have as long as there is chocolate on it. Not only do they have hundreds of recipes to try, but they also sell their own grass-fed whey protein powders. Some of their flavors include eggnog, snickerdoodle, strawberry cheesecake, bananas foster, and more. You can get 10% off anything by going to their website, which is in the show notes. They also have a monthly app subscription service where you can unlock all of their recipes and some app exclusive ones too. So make sure to check out Clean Simple Eats after today's episode. All right, we're back going over eight things your contractor wishes you knew, and we are on point number four. So number four we have is we are scheduled, or you are scheduled, weeks in advance and our sub and our subcontractors work other jobs. Do people know that? No, they don't. <laughs> um kind of going back to our last point, um we talked about the person not thinking we were putting them as a priority. Mm -hmm. Um it was one of those things too with permits and inspectors and dealing with them and things taking longer. That pushes a job back. Yeah. Now my schedule may have been set for a certain time or something else. Well, now that I've had to wait longer for this inspector or something, mm -hmm. the time frame that I may have originally kind of had scheduled for my subcontractor, my plumber, or electrician, or whatever, well, that didn't happen. So now when I can get them in, they have other jobs and schedules to keep, so they have to get those jobs done and everything. Um, which delays projects too. Um, I've been pretty fortunate that I have a pretty good relationship with my HVAC, uh, plumber, electrician, that they squeeze me in sometimes a little bit. Um, you know, they will push as much as they can and stuff to get things in for me. Um, 
which helps out. You know, mm-hmm. customers at least like it that somebody's there something day, even if they can't get it all done. At least something got started. They like to see that. Um, again, kind of the explaining with customers. Eventually, they kind of, you know, they they do understand it and it gets. But at first, it's always just kind of something of, you know, why isn't somebody here or whatever it might yeah. be or why is something taking longer or whatever. Um, so like a lot of these points kind of intertwine, but. Yeah, so Mm -hmm. I work other jobs several at a time. I mean, I think, again, a small business myself, but I think at one point I had six jobs technically open and going at one time. Yeah. Um, So. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, everything would start when it's supposed to start and finish when it needs to end and things would get there on time, but... Yeah, like you said, if one is delayed, then it kind of just spirals and it's like a domino effect. The other one yeah. is now delayed and then the next one's delayed. and yeah, yeah, that's what happened. That's why I ended up having so many jobs going on at one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to do that, but right. I had to. So yeah. Number five was that sometimes materials take longer to arrive and there's nothing that we can do. That is very true. Kind of like we've just been talking a little bit. You know, I wasn't trying to get too much into this point um but yeah materials can take longer uh i think materials have been huge right now at taking forever yes like everywhere with every type of business even the stores are shortage yes yeah i mean certain jobs i don't like to start them until i know uh some of the big materials are in which i'm given a time frame that these will be in but until it's actually in, I don't want to demo out your kitchen and yeah. now my customers without a kitchen for an extra week, two weeks, mm-hmm. whatever it might be, because I'm waiting on cabinets. Um, I mean, yeah, cabinets alone have almost, at one point, almost tripled in time that it would take to get here. Usually it was always six weeks, mm-hmm. roughly. Then one customer ordered, I think it was 12 weeks. Uh, Some other customers I was talking with uh, was told about 15 weeks uh, to wait for cabinets. It's a real long time to wait for something. Um, You would hope with that type of delay, maybe it would actually be in. Um, I've had other customers, though, um, they themselves, though, had ordered these items like doors. Mm Mm-hmm. That, too, took forever. They had a patio door I was going to install. Oh, right. um, yeah, it was supposed to take, I think, eight weeks. Um, I think about ten weeks went by, nothing. They tried calling the manufacturer, the store they ordered it from, given, like, the runaround, and then eventually the order had to get, like, canceled and reordered. And, yeah, it just was such a pain. Um, and I had a hole cut in their wall then <laughs> because it was one of those things. It was earlier on uh, when I was starting this, but it was kind of, we did the work a little bit because we were trying to get it done before they moved into the house and everything. Um, but yeah, stuff just got pushed back on it and mm-hmm. did get that job wrapped up the day they moved in, basically. So, (laughs) and they hired us again for other projects, so it wasn't. Yeah, two other times. Yep. (laughs) It was good. (laughs) No, yeah, they're good. They're they're great. Um, People understand. Yeah, they understand. That was frustrating on their part. They knew it was nothing on me. Yeah. um, And everything. But yeah, that's another thing. I mean, parts, materials, and things are just getting worse, and you never know what kind of Mm -hmm. delay there might be. I mean, even with like just weather and other things, um, you know, there were. Ships stuck in canals, which delayed things. Um, Lumber materials might have an effect. I don't know how much, but just recently there was, like, flooding up in Canada. I don't know if trades come through, you know, wood and stuff comes through that area, but I know a lot of wood Mm -hmm. manufacturing stuff is up in Canada, um, so that might have a delay and also a price increase again on lumber. Great. (laughs) Hopefully not. Yeah. But, Yeah. All right. Well, number six was, I'm not going to be at your house every day. 
Yeah, as much as I enjoy you, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to be at your house every day. Um, no. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, again, with scheduling things, there's just times maybe somebody won't be at your house. Um, the part that I do, I might be done. I may have gotten mm -hmm. done early, you know, earlier than I thought. Uh, but, I mean, let's say I get done on a Wednesday or Thursday, but my plumber can't be there till Tuesday yeah. or Monday. So there might be a day or two and stuff that somebody might not be there. Um, don't worry. Don't think we forgot about you. Don't think anything <laughs> of that. I usually try to explain before there's going to be a day or two or something that somebody won't be there. I usually let the customer know, like, hey, I'm done with my part. The next step is this. Mm -hmm. This is what has to get done before uh, anything else can really move forward. And they will be here on this day you know, at such and such time. Um, again, customers are pretty reasonable with that. Um, I think the hardest part is they're living in the construction zone, and we've been there before where it's like you just want it to get done, and you're thinking, well, I heard these people. Why aren't they here every single day? But I'm trying to think of another business that would be there every day. Yeah, um, that would... You know, if you had a cleaning person come in, you see... The beginning and the end in a short period of time, but remodeling is just, it's a whole different ball game. Is that the True. term? And it, it just takes longer, and people it, don't, sometimes it can. don't realize that. I don't know. Part of it, too, is that I am a smaller yes. remodeling company right. and everything else. So I have subcontractors that I use for the plumbing and electrical and HVAC because um, I'm not licensed in those areas mm -hmm. um so in order for permits and everything else you need a licensed person to do that um so it can take a little bit longer because again they have schedules and everything else if i was a larger company and i had my own personal you know plumber and electrician on payroll then that i could get good. them yeah then i could get them there a little bit faster um but in the long run, in most of those companies, they are charging way more. Well, yeah, you have to pay all of those employees a full salary per year for the whole... Full salary, unemployment, <clears throat> pay, you know, yeah, all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, the price goes up, overhead then for the company goes up, everything else. So, yeah, they definitely cost a small fortune more. Um, I mean, I've had some clients... Some of the companies that they wanted to use for certain jobs, I mean, I came in like half cost of some of <laughs> yeah. these others. So, yeah. So, number seven, kind of along the same lines, we have that you don't work 24 7. Yeah, I do enjoy my sleep. Um, <laughs> so, no, I do not work 24 7. I think, if I can just say, with some small businesses, um, especially like work from home things like people seem to forget that you want to have a nine to five kind of structure, even though in the evenings or on the weekends, you are still working, you're working on your business. Like, okay, for example, this right now is part of our business and it's a Sunday. You're not out doing remodeling jobs, but you're not working like, I guess, 24 seven on the actual project, modeling the project itself. And people can't call you at 11 p.m. about, you know, you're probably not going to answer your phone. No, I'll be sleeping. Yes, um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't hear it, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, um, yeah, I, yes, being a small business owner and type of business, I'm fairly accessible. There is, yes, a line that it's like, okay. I mean... It depends on the client, too. I mean, there's some clients, you know, if they're repeats, and I'm a little more okay responding to them mm -hmm. at other kind of certain times. Um, but it's like, if it's if it's kind of like after hour, it's kind of terming, um, I'm more okay with, like, a text or something, you know, yeah. than being like, okay, now I got to go talk on the phone. Because um, I do have a family, there's other noise going on stuff. It's like, okay, now I got to go out and I got to, you know, talk 
on the phone with this and stuff. So a text is a little bit easier because also then I don't have to respond right away. Mm-hmm. If I am doing something, you know, in my free time. Um, but yes, lots of times, even if it's after the, like you kind of said, the nine to five kind of structured timing, I'm working on other estimates and things like that, contacting and emails to subcontractors and everything else going on. Um, yeah. But yeah, I yeah, I don't work 24-7. Yeah. So the last one that we have is permits. What do you want to tell us about permits? What would you like to tell the uh, person who wants to hire you to remodel something? Uh, what do they need to know about permits? So permits deals with a lot of these other kind of things um, that we've been talking about, you know, your inspectors and things like that. So if you do want permits pulled, yes, there is an added cost. Um, obviously, the cost for the permit. Uh, timing can be lengthened because of, again, the inspector. Who knows if he's going to check it or whatever, or how often he checks things, uh, and to approve the permit. Uh, then depending on the type of work that you want done, um, the permit might require some other things. It might require um, calculations from an engineer yeah. on something um, or an architect. Um, so there's a bunch of different things that these permits might require. It might take longer. Also, permits, there's a lot of gray area on certain things, and a lot of different municipalities have different um, things of what you need a permit for. Like rules? Yes. So in one town, if you open up a wall, you needed a permit, a building permit, because you're opening up the wall to do plumbing. Whereas where we live, we open up the walls, and I didn't have to have a permit for it, but I had to have the plumbing permit. So each one's different areas that you might need a permit for. So like I said, there's a lot of kind of gray area, um, fixture replacement as they term it. A lot of places you don't need a permit for that. But again, there's some places it's... A fixture replacement? Like what? Um, so sometimes like a light fixture, like if you're changing the lights hanging or... You would need a permit to change that? Yeah, in some areas. Who would even know? Exactly. (laughs) So that's why I'm saying there's a lot of gray area kind of in it. Yeah. Um, toilets, that too depends on sometimes the municipality if you're replacing that. Um, but that's technically like a fixture. Can you imagine... Or your faucet. Can you imagine if like an inspector had to come around to your house all the time and like see if you changed anything? Yeah. That would be terrible. <laughs> yeah, that would. There's no way. So, like I said, there's a lot of gray area um, in kind of some of these things. You could get away with saying something's a fixture replacement. If you're kind of doing like a small bathroom remodel or something, you could get away with saying it's that. Um, mm-hmm. You probably wouldn't have any problems. Um, but if you're changing stuff majorly, definitely get a permit. Um like an addition or... Yeah, in addition, majorly changing things around. You know, you're making your bathroom bigger, really changing the layout and stuff. Um, but, you know, if you're taking out a vanity, putting new vanity in and a new toilet, that's that's kind of a fixture replacement. Um, so if somebody was to remodel their kitchen, they want a brand new kitchen. So they would need a permit for what? That's another thing. Depends on what you're really changing so a lot of things are then also grandfathered in so as long as you don't necessarily touch it you don't have to change it which means you don't need a permit okay um but there's enough there's some that you like do so some areas if you're replacing like a dishwasher you need a permit (laughs) so or even like it being the kitchen sink you need like a permit technically for it um but again it's kind of like a fixture replacement so as long as you're leaving like the layout you're not touching like electrical you know you're not opening up the walls to touch any of that stuff in theory you don't need a permit to do a kitchen so in theory i would say if you're gonna remodel something and you're working with key remodeling just ask 
and we will let you know. Yeah, we'll we'll advise you in the way to go. Um, but again, it's entirely up to the customer, really. I mean, mm-hmm. if it's a gray area, something like I said, a fixture replacement, and you can get away without having to get a permit for it. But if you really want one, we'll get you the permit. That's yeah. perfectly fine. Just understand too. There's an added cost and possibly added time. Yeah. Um, how much is a permit, you think? It depends. Some permits depends on how many things are getting done. You might be able to change or do four plumbing things with one permit for like $200. Oh. And then for each additional item, you know, it might be another extra $50 or something. Gotcha. Um, so it depends on all that stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much, James, for clearing up those things for us. For those of us who are not familiar with what a general contractor does, hopefully that helped one or some of our listeners. Yeah, no problem. Make sure to subscribe. We post a new episode every Friday. We hope you have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Catch you next time. Bye.